All right, so this is a little post-lab exercise uh, demonstration of how we might take our data from the neutralization reaction and get uh, the numbers that we need to out of it. So by now what you should have are, you know, your run where you mix the hot and the cold water. And so you've got those temperatures over, you know, a five-minute period. And then after you mix them together, you've got that temperature for, you know, five or six minutes. And then you've got the reactions where you mix them together and you should have the volumes of how much you mixed and then the, um, the concentrations of those acids and bases. Okay, so, so let's do our calculation first. Okay, so the first thing we need to know okay, is we know that um, the heat given up by the hot, right? So if we just want to call it Q, uh, the hot water, okay? The heat given off by that is then absorbed by the cold water, so Q cold plus then however much goes into the calorimeter, okay? So we've got, so we've got this uh, equation here. I'm a little out of focus, there we go. Okay, and so, so now the question is, um, how do we get Q? Well, Q then is equal to, in the case of uh, a liquid, the uh, mass of the liquid times its um, specific heat, or if you want to do moles of, you know, it depends on which number you are. I'm going to use specific heat. So we've got heat, in this case, whatever your liquid is, times the change in temperature. Okay, now for something like the calorimeter constant then, or for the calorimeter, it's going to be the calorimeter constant times the change in temperature. So that's going to incorporate in the mass and all that stuff by itself. Okay, so first, so we need to then, if we do this then, we can figure out the uh, mass of the hot times the heat capacity of, in this case, water, is going to eat times delta T hot is going to equal the mass of the cold times the heat capacity of water times the delta T cold. Then the change in the heat capacity of the, of the calorimeter is going to be its calorimeter constant times then it was the same temperature as the cold water, so that's going to be delta T cold. Okay, so that is how we set up the equation. It should be familiar probably from lecture uh, if you've had it. Okay, which I think at this point probably everybody it will have had this when, when they get to the calculations. Okay, so what we have to figure out from our data then is we have to figure out mass, okay, which we, we have a good idea from the volume, and the temperature change of the hot and the cold water. Okay, so first thing we need to know is the temperature change. We need to know the real temperature of the hot water and the real temperature of the cold water right when we mix them together. Okay, so you should have graphed this out, and so what I like to do is put them all on one graph. So these are three different graphs. So this bottom one here is the cold water temperature over five minutes, the hot water temperature over five minutes in the beaker, and then the temperature of the mixture after I mix them together. And then what I want is I want to know exactly the temperature, theoretical temperature and mixing. So we'll just go with five minutes here. And so we can fit each one of these equations then and then solve for at x equals five minutes and solve for y. Okay, so if you do that then, okay, so if you basically say, okay, for each of those equations, x equals 5.0, okay, what you find then is the temperature of the hot. Okay, now that's the one that's going to be the most cooling. Okay, so that one's the one that's probably the hardest to get to. So if you use that equation, you plug in, you know, five minutes into that, you get that equal to 38.15 degrees Celsius. Okay, if you do that for the cold, now the cold and the mixed are both pretty flat, so you can see that slope is almost zero, so there's really not a huge effect. But we can still say, so this is the hot cold then is 21.37 degrees Celsius, and then the mixture after you mix it at five minutes is 28.88. Now I may, I may have a little error in my math and my calculator, I, don't, I, I think those are right, okay? Okay, so now we need to know the change in temperature of the hot water and the change in temperature of the cold water. Okay, so, so this is the change in temperature of hot is from here to here, right? So that delta T of hot then is equal to that minus that, uh, which ends up being minus 9.27 uh, degrees. And then the temperature of the cold equals... Um, 7.51 degrees. Okay. So now we can plug this in. We know the mass. So in this case, I wrote down the mass on the graph. 
Uh, the mass is 100 mils of each. So we know the density. We can look it up. There's a table there in your lab manual that has densities. Um, so in this case, the density is one. We have 100 mils. It's one gram per mil. So we've got 100 grams of each one. Okay. We'll just go ahead. We'll call it. I think our best bet is 100 grams, like that. I don't know if we have a significant figure beyond that. Okay. So then, and then we just and we know that the heat capacity of water. 4.184 joules per gram Celsius. Okay, so if we plug that into here then, what we get then, and we solve, we have to solve for C cal. Okay, so you end up taking this and subtracting, um, so this is a negative number, right, because the negative time I put you, so it ends up being a positive number. Okay, so it ends up being something like um, uh, C cal then, so if you solve, and I'm not going to go through all the math, but I'm just plugging all these things in. If you solve, you get the C cal in this case to be 98.05 um, joules per Kelvin. Okay. All right, so, so it's just basically setting up and following the law of conservation of mass. Okay, so that's a number we're going to need okay, for the next reaction. Because the next one then is the neutralization. Okay, so the neutralization then, we know that the reaction generated by the, by the um, reaction, so the, the exothermic heat provided by the reaction is going to equal the, is going to be absorbed by the water itself, okay, so the, um, the, the water, so Q, H2O plus the water absorbed by the calorimeter. Okay. So now the heat of the reaction okay, is going to be equal to the enthalpy in this case, right? So uh, minus delta H of the reaction okay, times the number, so this is in case is a molar number, times the moles of the reaction is going to equal then the heat of the water, so that'll be the mass of the water. Okay, times its specific heat, okay, whatever that mixture is going to be, it's not necessarily going to be that of pure water, times the change in temperature, plus then we've already calculated the calorimeter constant for, um, for the calorimeter, so 98.05 joules per Kelvin times the delta T there. Okay. So you need to solve for delta T uh, just as well, just as you did before. Okay, so in this case, the delta T, um, again, you want to use your slopes. And so you've got a pre-mix and post-mix. Remember, this is why it's so helpful to have the sodium hydroxide and the, the uh, HCl at the same temperature because that way you don't you only have to mess with it once. Okay, so if you do that math, okay, and then you solve for the equations like, um, like you did before where you just put in whatever your mixing time was at five minutes or whatever the case may be. Okay, then you can you can extrapolate the data. So in this case, um, the temperature of the pre was 22.7 degrees Celsius, and the temperature of the post is 33.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, now you don't necessarily remember Kelvin and Celsius as long as you don't go across zero and get into negative numbers. Celsius and Kelvin are equivalent. Now, if you're going into negative numbers, we can't have a negative Kelvin, right? So the lowest temperature is zero Kelvin. So, okay, so that means the delta T equals 10.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, now this part is what we're solving for. So here we can plug all this in. Now, the numbers we don't know, we don't know the mass of the mix. Okay, we know, because you've written it down, that it's 50 mils each. And that it's, and you know the concentrations. Okay, so the final concentration, if you think about, for my case, now it may be if you do the other acid base reaction, it's going to be different, right? So if we do, but if we do NaOH plus HCl, our products are NaCl plus H2O. Okay, so we have an aqueous solution, our product should be, the thing we're heating up is an aqueous solution of sodium chloride. And if we started with 50 mils of 2 molar, and 50 mils of slightly, I guess it's 2.05 molar, but um, 2.0 molar, because it's going to be, HCl is going to be a limiting reagent. There's just one hydrogen transfer. Now, if you have a different 
acid, there may be more than one hydrogen, so you need to make sure everything is balanced. So then this ends up being 100 mils, and if you do the stoichiometry, it ends up being 100 mils of one molar sodium chloride. So if you look in the uh, tables, and of course, if you have something else, then it's going to be a different reaction. Maybe two hydrogens are being transferred. Okay. So you can look up in the lab manual, it has the density and the heat capacity of one molar sodium chloride. So in this case, um, the mass of the mix is going to be equal to 100 mils. And the density of this, if you look it up, is 1.04 grams per mil. So that ends up being 104 grams. Okay. So now we can solve this. We can have minus delta H of the reaction. I guess we should, we'll, we'll get rid of the moles here for now because we are talking about the heat of the reaction is the mass, 104 grams, times the heat capacity. And you have to look that up as well for one molar sodium chloride. Now, if yours is different, you need to look up a different number, but it should be 3.89 joules um, per gram Celsius. And then delta T then is 10.7. Okay, And then the calorimeter then is 98.05 joules per Kelvin times 10.7 degrees Celsius. I mean, it's the same. One degree Celsius is one Kelvin, so everything is cool there. Okay, and so, so now you can solve then for the delta H of the reaction. Okay? So if you plug that in for me, I find that the heat of the reaction is minus 500, uh, okay, yeah, so it's, it's, if you solve, because it's minus there, so it's going to be plus. So delta each of the reaction is minus 503.77 joules, period. Okay, and then to get the molar enthalpy then, we need to divide by how many moles we have. So if we have 100 mils times one mole per liter, okay, so we have 0 0.1 liters, one mole per liter, the reaction ended up being a reaction of 0 0.1 moles. So you divide that by 0 0.1 moles, okay, and you end up getting basically multiplying times 10. I prefer to use kilojoules, so there are 1,000 joules in a kilojoule. So if you do that, then your answer is minus 53.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Now, if, <coughs> if you transfer more than one hydrogen, you know, if you're using sulfuric acid, then this number has to be divided then by two mol by two, right? Because it's going to be or multiplied by. I guess it's uh, doubled. Okay, so I think whatever you have to figure it out. You have to adapt for the fact that you're transferring two moles uh, of hydrogen. There's two moles of react, point two moles. So I guess you divide by two. All right. So if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to come and see your instructor. Uh, but hopefully this gets you at least sort of in the ballpark.